cotangent, cotangent, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. What about in quadrant two? Negative. Why is it going to be negative? Because what? Because only one of them is negative. So if one of them is negative and one of them is positive, in terms of sine and cosine, sine, that's I G N, then when you divide a positive by a negative or a negative by a positive, you end up with a negative for your tangent and your cotangent. What about in quadrant three? Positive. Positive because both your sine and your cosine <coughs> will be negative. And what about quadrant four? Negative. negative. So this is one of the things that seems to mess people up more than anything else, that you're positive in quadrant one and positive in quadrant three for your tangents and cotangents, whereas you're positive or negative in consecutive quadrants for your sines and cosines. So for instance, here your sines are both positive, here your uh, sines are both SI, SIN sines, are, uh, cosines are both negative, and then here your cosines are both positive, so it's kind of weird when you kind of skip them. Lots of people don't like that. Now what? Find the values of the trig functions if we know that the cosecant of theta is 10 over 9. In order to find the values of trig functions, you might think we need to know what theta is. But we don't. And we're going to actually do this problem two different ways. One way is using the information we know about the unit circle. And the other way will be using triangles, since we did triangles and unit circles. And then when you're, we're done, you might be able to say, oh, I like that way better. One or the other, you get to pick which one. Cosecant is 10. I give up. Cosecant of theta is 10 over 9. Now I'm going to ask you to find all of these. The sine of theta, the cosine of theta, the tangent of theta, the secant of theta, and the cotangent of theta. There's one of them which is really easy. Which one? Cosine. Is it the sine or the cosine? The sine. It's the sine because remember your cosecant is what? 1 over sine. It flips over the sine. So that means my sine of theta is going to be 1 over 10 over 9, which is 9 over 10. So far, so good? Well, this has to be on the right 1 over 10 over No, you can just flip it over. Now, how can we find the cosine of theta, given the information that we know about the Yes, we know that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta equals 1. So we can plug that in and work it out. So I don't know cosine squared, so I'll write cosine squared of theta plus, but I do know what the sine of theta is. It's 9 over 10, so I'll have 9 over 10 squared equals 1. Now what? Being the negative or the 9 over 10. Don't I need to do something to it for? No, the square. I can square it first and then I'll subtract it. So I'll have cosine squared of theta plus 81 over 100 equals 1. Now I'll subtract it. So I have cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus 81 over 100, which is the same thing as 100 over 100 equals, I mean, excuse me minus 81 over 100, which is 19 over 100. So cosine squared of theta equals 19 over 100. That means cosine of theta is what? Plus or minus the square root of 19 over the square root of 100, which is 10. Which one is it, and how do I know? Plus. Why? The how do I know part needs to be answered too. That doesn't matter. There are multiple. 
There are places where the coast is